everybody here today. If you are visiting with us, we're glad that you are here with us. Uh, I don't know about you, but a couple of things first. Just remember that Wednesday night, we will not be meeting. We never meet in between Christmas and New Year's on Wednesday night. And so you're free to have your own Bible studies if you want to, okay? Or do whatever you want to do. But be sure and just remember that no classes here on Wednesday night. And then next Sunday, again, no Bible classes next Sunday, uh, January the 2nd, if I'm right. Is that right? Okay, thank you. I need you all to talk back, talk back. Uh, so it's good to have everybody here today. Uh, I know some of you thought that I was been talking to me, but it was my ugly brother who looks exactly like me. But no, my older brother, Dan, is here, and his wife, Robin. Dan's an a elder at Memorial Road Church, uh, where I served for a long, long time. So it's glad to have him here. Someone said, we can tell you part. He said, you've got more gray hair than your older brother. Thank you, Lake Homa. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just more wisdom, right, Ken? Ken? Exactly. Okay. Well, let's hope so. So, I didn't, I, usually I sit down and kind of do my sermons that way. After eating everything I did, I need to burn a little, few more calories today. And so, we're going to do this. Now, the one thing you don't have today, because the other thing we don't do at this time of the year is we don't do one bulletin. And today's that bulletin. And today was the day that I actually have a graph I want to show you, and I want you to actually kind of take it and use it for the next year, for something that you can look at and see and, and go, you know what, these are the areas in my life, the characteristics of my life. And so I'm going to give you this big graph. What I'd like for you to do is at the end, when it's all filled in, get your cameras out and you can take a picture of it. Is that good? Because you're not going to remember it otherwise. I'm going to give you four pictures, though four pictures, and if you can remember those four pictures, you've got this sermon. You can understand it. Now, all this is is a resource. This is a tool for you as you look forward to the new year. As you look forward to the new year, what I want to look at, what I want you to do, all of us to do, including myself, is look at four areas of our lives. And that's what I want us to do as we go through this. I want to start out with uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13, and set the scene Set the scene for where we're going this morning. So here we go. Therefore my, be- therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure." How when you see that passage, we know that God's will is, is working in us. We know that God is working inside of us. But it also in that passage says, you've got a responsibility. I've got a responsibility. We have a responsibility to actually work out this relationship that we have with God with fear and trembling. There's a responsibility that is given to you and to me to each of us, to work out that fear and trembling, that relationship with God, and to understand that He is working inside of us as well. He is working inside of us as well. Okay, so here's why I want to do that. I want you guys to think of this graph. So here's the graph. That's all it is. It's a star with four sections inside of it. And here's the reason I put the star there. It's because we're at the center of this. You're at the center of this. God's at the center of this. But here's what we're supposed to do. Here's our marching orders, as I want to say, for 2022. Okay? That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to do is say, here's my marching orders for 2022. I'm going to look at these four areas. And all I'm going to do today is give you a lot of scriptures. So here we go. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that... You may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you, say it with me now, in which you, ready, shine like stars in the universe. We are to do what? We're to shine like stars 
in the universe. In what type of context are we supposed to do that? In a crooked and depraved generation, we are to shine like stars in the universe. And so that's us. We are the example of Christ. Now, now let, me, let me ask you a question here. In our navigation, in our navigation, how we navigate, especially ships in the old days, how they navigate you know, one place to another? They navigated by what? By the stars. They navigated by the stars. So, I don't know about you, have you ever been disoriented when you're driving? Deborah, it doesn't happen that much anymore because we've got these things that tell us exactly where we need to go. So, we don't usually get disoriented. But before all that happened, Deborah and I were in Dallas. We had never been in Dallas before. I mean, I grew up in Tipton, so hey, come on. So, we had never been in Dallas before except to Six Flags on a bus and back. That's all we had done. And here we are, we have gone to Dallas, and we have driven there, and now we got to get back. It is no cell phones. We had a map, but that didn't matter, okay? Because it was cloudy, there was overcast, and we couldn't tell. And so we left that morning, and we go, and we get on I-30, and we think, you know, we're going in the right direction, and I see this one sign that says I-30 East, and I keep going. And i thinking, where am I going? I have no clue. And Deborah and I are just having a conversation. I see another sign that says I-30 East. And I go, aren't I supposed to be going west? We went 20 miles, 20 miles out of the way. Had to turn around because we couldn't navigate because we didn't see the sun. We didn't see the star. And I wonder how many of us, how many of us, our spiritual lives are disoriented because we've got clouds over us and we don't see the sun. And you know what I mean by that, right? That we don't see Jesus. And so it's difficult for us to live a life when we've got this all over us and we can't navigate through that. So this is what I want to do today is try to give you the four areas of our life to help you navigate that spiritual disorientation that we often have in our lives. And all of us have been there. This isn't something new, is it? This isn't something new. Everybody has been through this. Everybody has those periods in our lives where it just seems like our relationship with God is not on that connection that it needs to be. All right, so here's, let's start out. Let's start out with this first one here. And let me just throw this other scripture out in Ephesians 5, verse 8. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Say it with me, last, last sentence. Live as children of light. Live as children of light. So we are ch children of God that are supposed to be light in this world. We know that. I could have done Matthew 5, 14 through 16 and talked about sending, being the light on a hill, not hidden, but something that is there for everybody to see. So here's the four, uh, four characteristics. Here's the first one. Intent. Intent. Okay, and this is, this, is, this is the state of a person's mind that directs his or her actions. This is an area of life that no one sees. No one sees my intent. No one sees your intent. Unless it happens. This is what's going on in our heart behind the scenes. This is what's happening when we're trying to figure out, what am I supposed to do with this individual? What am I supposed to do with this situation? How am I going to react to that situation? And all these things are going on inside of us in our heart. Now, I know what our intent ought to be, right? We know what our intent ought to be in every situation. We know what our intent ought, intent ought to be because that's the greatest commandment, right? And so, see it on the screen, Matthew 22, 37 through 38. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
This is great in the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The intent, the intent is what's going on in our lives today. It's what's going on in our lives today. What's going on right now in our heart. And the question is that I have to answer to myself is, am I obeying? Am I obeying? the commandment of God in the deep recesses of my heart. In the deep recesses, am I obeying His will? And I think about this verse in Philippians 2, verses 2 through 3, that says, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing. Here's here's that intent right here. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, But in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Wow, that's difficult, isn't it? It is for me many times. Because many times that selfish ambition and that conceit, which is the intent of my heart, gets in the way of relationships with others. And Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints of the moral, and discerning, listen, listen, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart, of the heart. Okay, here's the first image. That's the first image. If you can get the heart, you can get and understand that the first place that we're talking about in this whole idea of shining like stars is the heart. It's what's going on inside of us. It's what's happening inside here. And God says, it says there, discerning the, that the intention, the Word of God, when we dig into that, it discerns our heart. It helps us see where we are and who we are and what we're supposed to be. It's there to discern the thoughts and intentions of the hearts. Okay, so just remember that image And don't forget this, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay, here's the second characteristic. The second characteristic is vision. Vision. It's a perceived way of being which is not fully present. Okay? A vision is something that happens tomorrow, and we'll get to that slide in just a minute, but it's something that happens tomorrow. So that's what the vision is. It's something I want to do down there. It's something that's out there that I am trying to, to strive for. It's my state of being, who I am, that I want to be like that, but I'm not fully realized. I haven't really gotten there yet. And how many of us see our vision and we get all out of whack? Okay, so I've worn glasses since I was 13. Since I was 13. And the first ones I had were the cheapest ones that were the, just the black. And now they're kind of in style, but they were just black and stuff. And, and, and I looked like a geek. So did Dan. But, but he didn't wear his. He just didn't want to. But I, I couldn't see. I couldn't see. So I needed my glasses. And I had to wear them. And although I have perfect and good vision, because I've got good doctors Because I've got good doctors, I have these floaters in my eyes. Drive me nuts. Even right now, as I'm panning back and forth, these things are going in and out. You get cloudy, you don't get cloudy, they're just there all the time. And my vision is blurred unless I'm looking at you. If I'm looking at you, you're clear. But if I'm over like this, doing like this, there is this this stuff that is inside me. That's going around. And, it, and let's, t- let's bring that back to us. So in my spiritual life, in my spiritual life too, where's my spiritual life? Is my spiritual life in a way that all I'm doing many times is I know where I need to be. That's a vision. But I can't really see. And I know where I want to be. But I'm not there yet. Listen to this passage here. Indeed, I count everything as loss. Now, see, here's, here's the goal. Here's the goal of our vision, where we're supposed to be headed. I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth 
of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. And so my whole goal is for my vision is, is my vision is looking at there. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Him. Is it fully realized? No. You know me. I know you. We know each other. No, it's not fully realized. No, it's not where it needs to be. Yes, can, it, can I hope one day I'm moving closer? I, and that's where we're doing. We stick our eyes. We put our eyes. We focus on Jesus. We focus on Him. And you can see that that happens tomorrow. And listen to this verse. For by the grace of God, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us. I love that verse. I love that part right there. Training us. Being trained. This isn't something you can just do. This is a process of training in our lives. Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the vision. The day I'm waiting for, the day I hope all of us are waiting for, that day hope will come soon of Jesus returning and taking His with Him. Boy, am I waiting for that. And the, the, the image that I want you to see is that hourglass, that, that spyglass, that whatever you want to call that. But just remember, you're looking, you're seeing, you're going toward there. Okay, here's the third characteristic. The third characteristic is behavior. Behavior. This is what we do. This is what is seen by others. This is how everybody sees us. They see you do something. They see me do something. This is our behavior. And we have a choice of what we do with that behavior, don't we? We can choose either to put on or put off the things in this life. We can take things on us or we can take things away. Listen to this verse. The truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through the deceitful desires. There's that intent, this deceitfulness. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, so I have an image now of a guy, it was the shovel digging. And that image of a shovel digging is there because the question I have is, what do you need to bury in your life this year? So that as you go to next year, you need to say, I am done with that. I'm going to bury this. I'm going to put it in the ground, and I'm not going to come with, back to it. And then, here's the other thing. But what do you also need to dig in the ground to discover? So that image has two kind of ideas to it. The idea of digging something up and burying it in there, but also the idea of digging something up and discovering great riches. Great riches. So which one are you going to do? So remember the image of the shovel in digging. And here's the buried part. Here's what I was talking about. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. And then discover, the discovery process, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. As God in Christ forgave you. Okay, that brings me to the final, the final section, the final section. And these are our values, our values. Those areas in our lives we often keep and hang on to. And this is the fruit of the Spirit or the flesh. Which one are you going to hang on to? Which one are you going to hang on to? Colossians 3, verses 7 through 9 says, In these you too once walked. So all of us, these are the values that many of us have walked in. When you were living in them. 
But now you must put away from you, put, put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. These are values that many of us would say, I'm not, I don't hold that as a value. Well, are you angry a lot? Do you get upset and have that wrath with other people and how we respond on social media and how does it look to others? Is there slander or obscene talk? Is they're lying to one another? And then you have the opposite of that. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. There is no law. Okay, so my last image, last image is a suitcase. It's a suitcase. What are the values that you're going to keep and take with you wherever you go? What are the values That you say, these are going to be the values that I hold to in my life. These are the values that I'm going to carry. These are the values that are going to be important to me in my life. And so while you have the intent, which is here on the heart, that is inside that no one sees, and the vision of where we want to go and where we want to be, and then you have that behavior of what we do. And then you have this idea of my values, which you can't have one without the other. When you're going to shine like stars in the universe... If we're going to shine like stars in the universe, you can't just say, I'm just going to have the values, but that's not going to be in my behavior, right? Or I can have the behavior and get that right, but really deep in my heart, the intent is not there toward others. Or, and then are we all, are we all looking forward to where we want to be? Because every decision that we make, in 2022, ought to be guided, ought to be guided by our vision for where He wants us to be. All this happens, none of this can happen without Jesus Christ in our lives. None of this can happen without the power of the Holy Spirit living within inside of us. None of this can happen if we don't have each other to help us along with this as well. Bear with each other. Bear with one another's burdens. We need each other to help us on this road that we're on. Let's stand and sing.